Hi, this is Rafiq Suleiman, and you are watching Cloud Simplified. Hi everyone, and welcome to another lesson from Cloud Practitioner Express. And in this lesson, we're going to go through the cloud computing benefits. And if you remember, I have recorded a previous detailed video about what are the benefits of cloud computing and I highly recommend if you haven't watched this video then please pause I'm going to put the link here go and watch the video and then come and resume this one because in the other video I have put much much more details but again if I want to summarize what are the cloud computing benefits the first benefit and usually this is the most attractive benefit to organization is cost savings so organizations, they start by thinking of adopting the cloud because they want to do cost savings. And how can we achieve cost savings if you remember? Because on premise, I need to rent or I need to buy this physical proximity. On premise, I need to size according to the peak. On the cloud, I don't size according to the peak, I size according to the average. On premise, I need to pay enormous amount of money on resources and electricity and also on air conditioning in order to be able to maintain the temperature of my resources and of my infrastructure. Whether on the cloud, I don't need any of this. So on the cloud, I can simply focus on my applications. I don't need to think about the data center. I don't need to think about any hardware. I can simply focus on innovation and I can focus on how I can enhance my customer experience. And then the second benefit is how do I pay? If you remember on premise, I used to pay in a CapEx way. And CapEx way means that sometimes I need to spend or I need to pay in an upfront bulky investments. And if you have been dealing with big data center, this can be in multi-million dollar paid upfront versus in the cloud, if you remember, the way I pay, we called it variable expenses. And variable expenses, because this completely depends on your usage. This completely depends on your consumption. It's a consumption-based model. So whatever you consume, you pay for it. And if you don't consume, you don't pay for it. And that's the second benefit, how do I pay? And then benefit number three is something very unique to the cloud, what we called it elasticity or scalability. If I have on-premise, on-premise, if you remember from the video, the way I size it, I need to size it according to the peak. And sometimes I even need to oversize. And I always need to guess what is the capacity that I need. And sometimes maybe this guessing is not correct, or even some other times my application is becoming very successful, which is something very good. So what I guessed is not now correct and I need to add much, much more resources. But on the cloud, that's not the case because in the cloud, I have the concept of elasticity, if you remember. Elasticity means if I need more resources, I can scale out and after some time, if I no longer need these resources, I can decommission these resources and that's what we call scaling back in and if you remember this can be done automatically using a very important service called auto scaling group then point number four is what we call economies of scale and the best way to explain economies of scale is very simply to compare if you are building your own data center how many servers will you have you will have 10 20 even 100, 200 servers, that's a very big number for a data center, versus if we are building AWS data center, having hundreds of thousands of servers in each data center that we have. So if you wanna compare in the smaller scale, what will be the price per server that you have versus in the AWS scale, what will be the price per server that we are getting? So we have something very unique here in the concept of economies of scale. Now, the more customers are coming to share this infrastructure, the lower AWS is 
reducing the prices. The lower customers coming to share this infrastructure and that's what we call aggregated customer usage and that's the key word here in your exam. The lower AWS will reduce the prices. And the good news here, this comes in a flywheel. Flywheel means because the lower we reduce our prices, again, the more customers are coming into AWS uh, data centers. And that's the economies of scale. And then point number four is speed and agility. And that's a big differentiator or another big differentiator on the cloud. Because if you remember from the example, if I need to buy equipment in my physical data center, the industry average waiting time right now, especially after COVID and after the supply chain issue and the semiconductors challenge that we have in the market right now, I'm going to wait for a few months just until I have the equipment on site. And then another few months to do racking, stacking, cabling, tagging and then installing virtualization, then I start installing my application and testing it. But what about the cloud? In the cloud, it is literally a few minutes and I'll be doing later on some hands-on and I'll be showing you how you can have a server up and running literally in a few minutes on the cloud. And then the last one here or the final benefit is what we call going global in minutes. And let's take this example. Imagine if you have a data center somewhere serving your customers and then later on you want to open or your application has been very successful and you want to open another physical data center maybe in a different continent. Then what are the challenges that you're going to go through? Again, what will be the sizing? So you need to do another sizing and then you need to wait for the equipment to come on site and maybe that's a different country with different customs regulation. That's a different, a different country with different language, for example. So a lot of challenges versus if we're deploying this on AWS and if you remember the concept of infrastructure as a code. In the infrastructure as a code, simply it means I have my design, even my very complicated design, EC2 instances, security groups, network access list, my VPC, my subnets, my RDS, my multi-AZ, all of this in just one template. I can take this template file, go to another region, and then from a service called CloudFormation, and please remember this service, from this service, I can put the template file, I can upload it, and AWS is going to create all of these services and in the correct order. So which service needs to be created even before the other service that will consume it. And that's the concept of going global in minutes. And with this, we come to the end of this lesson. Thank you so much for watching.